Welcome to the Daily Commercial Forum. I am your host, Sandy Moore. In 2011, the Lake County Animal Shelter provided care for 18,985 dogs and cats. Many of these animals were from unwanted litters of pets that were not spayed or neutered. Today, we are going to talk about the efforts being made in our community to save many of these animals from euthanasia and the importance of being a responsible pet owner and spaying and neutering our animals. Our guests are Robert Sargent, Leesburg Public Information Officer, Marjorie Boyd, the Director of Lake County Animal Services, and Haley Weber, a young lady who is determined to make a difference in the life of these animals. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Well, let's start off by really talking to Haley. Uh, Haley, tell us, why is this subject uh, so important to you? Um, basically, because I'm an animal lover. I mean, to know that so many animals are being euthanized in the shelter and that I have my own and that, you know, the animals that are there are just like the cats and dogs that are in my house and the ones that I love and the ones I see out in the public are being euthanized at puppy age. It's, it's very upsetting and sad to me. So I've taken a passion for it. And how was this brought to your attention? I actually, my cousin was looking for a dog and we went on the Lake County Animal Services website and we saw a picture of one that she really liked. And so when she, when I called down to the shelter to see if it was still there, they ha it had already been euthanized. Oh. And so it was very hard for her because she's only nine years old and I had to tell her, well, the dog you like so much has already been euthanized and she didn't like it and I didn't like it. So I investigated a little bit more to see really how many dogs were being euthanized and then I was astonished so I took it upon myself to try to make a difference. Well and we're going to talk a little bit more about what you are doing but first let's talk a little bit about the animals themselves and how they get into the shelters. Marjorie tell us how did the animals end up in the shelters? Well most of the animals end up in the shelters um, we work from complaints where they're actually picked up running loose as strays. A lot of people end up bringing animals that they find to us or relinquishing their own animals. So a lot of different ways that it can... Yeah, there's a lot of different ways. So, But those are probably the top three reasons that the animals would, would come to us. And what happens once they're taken into the shelter? Depending on the type of animal, uh, mainly dogs and cats, for the first five days they would stay in the unadoptable areas where owners could come if they were missing their pet to reclaim them. After the first five days, if they passed the adoptable uh, procedures, then they would be placed up for adoption in which they can stay as long as temperament is good, health is good, I have space for them. Now, you know, we're talking about lost dogs and things like that. I mean, people are going to lose their dogs. How does spaying and neutering your dog help this particular situation? Well, I don't think that the public realizes just how many animals wind up at your local animal services or animal control agency. And, and they run when they're, when they're intact, they're looking for another animal to mate with and so it does cause you know they're in their mind they're more likely to run away than an animal that's already been fixed. Oh okay so the, a dog that hasn't been spayed or neutered is more likely to be looking or to, to run away from Fairly. your home is what you're trying to say. Yes. Yes. Your male dogs they, they can smell the female that's in heat for up to five miles so they're gonna travel um, in search of that, that other animal. So how, do, why, why do you think most people don't necessarily spay or neuter their animals? I think the number one reason is the cost. The cost of actually having that service done by a veterinarian. And, and can you give us an estimate on how much that could cost? <laughs> it's all over the place. <laughs> it's all over the place. Yeah, um, a, a lot of counties have really good low cost spay neuter uh, programs in place in a lot of counties um, there's very little low cost. And that's ours. So, and here in Lake County um, we have a few areas where there's some low cost uh, clinics offered but even the low cost that's offered is still higher than a lot of your other counties so um, being able to afford to have that done I think is the number one reason that, that they're not doing it. And lack of awareness. I mean, people think that, you know, you get your animal 
spayed or neutered and it's going to cause a change in the animal's attitude, its masculinity, something about it. But I mean, in all reality, when you have your animal fixed, then it causes less likely to get ill from certain cancers and things like that. And then it also, it causes a better animal. One, they don't want to run away and they live with you longer and healthier and fatter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Haley, tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do. I know you're, is, is it that you're trying to, um, to change a law? Well, in Lake County or? I mean, eventually, yes, I'd like to have, you know, the spay and neuter ordinance, but right now it's just that I want to make people aware, make people aware, you know, that there is a problem. You, if your dog gets in the animal shelter, you know, five days of it being there and it gets euthanized, guess what? You have to check the shelter every day. And what if it doesn't get there for a week and then, you, you know, you lose it? Well, it's a problem. And if you don't spay and neuter, then you're just, you're causing, you're, ca you're helping cause the population. The biggest thing I hear is, because we have a rescue and we go to adoption events with people with intact animals, they say, well, I find good homes for my puppies. I make sure I know where they're going. Yes, you find good homes for your puppies, but when you put your puppy in a home, the puppy that's still sitting in the shelter didn't find a home, and it had to be euthanized for space. Right. Now, so how long have you been doing this? Um, I started in July when I talked to the state senator. And so tell us a little bit about the process. What exactly have you done? <laughs> um, I started off, I didn't know where to start off, so I actually talked with um, our district's senator and our district house of representatives and tried to get a feel for the whole government thing because I had absolutely no idea. I've only ever taken one government class. So, so you've learned a lot probably through this I've process. I've learned a lot. And okay. then I went to the, I talked to Marjorie got some more information on her statistics and what her statistics were based on. And then I went to the counties. I went to our county and found out, you know, what we did. And then I went to surrounding counties figuring out what they do. And then once I realized our county wasn't doing near what some of the other counties are doing, I went to our cities. First, I tried to talk to the commissioners and they, they needed, no, just one voice wasn't enough to sway them. So I had, I went to the cities in efforts to try to get more people on board because our cities speak for so many people. So tell me a little bit about what it is, what's the difference between what our county's doing and, and when you say we're not doing nearly as, uh, the same as other counties, what is that? Well, other counties, well, an example is our adoption fees are the highest in any of the Central Florida counties. Um, we don't do, our county government does nothing for spay and neuter. Our government, we have no government-run facility or anything. You know, Orange County, Pasco County, other counties do things. Um, and it's awareness. We have no advertisement. We have no advertisement for our shelter. The only advertisement we have for our shelter is the fact that people know, hey, Animal Services is the place you can call if there's a nuisance. They don't know, oh, Animal Services is a place you can go adopt a puppy, a cat, a kitten, a dog. Most of the dogs and cat, I mean, I don't know about the cat's ages, but I know most of the dog's ages are all about a year old, so all the dogs that are gonna be euthanized next year aren't even born yet. Wow. So now, have you had any resistance to your efforts? I know you said that you went to the commissioners and they needed more than one voice, but. Um, I wouldn't say exactly that no, they haven't said that they're not gonna help me, but I do know that I went to them in August and it's December and I'm still sitting here with not a stone moved, it feels like. So why do you think that is? And Marjorie, I mean, you might be able to answer this too. And, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about the city of Leesburg and, your, and, and how you, you know, your response to that. But Marjorie, what, what do you think the, the, the resistance is in general and all of those things? I mean, you know, she talked about a lot of different things there. Um, of course, the first thing that pops into my mind is, mind is money. You know you, you know, you have to have money to be able to promote things and yeah, so, but what, what is it that you think? What is it? I think the number one obstacle right now is financial. Um, actually having budget money um, available to put towards the advertising, um, different types of programs that have been cut over the years, and all of those the educational programs, they've all been cut over the years. Um, we have one of the smallest budgets for animal services out of uh, most of our surrounding counties. And a lot of our surrounding counties will have three 
times to six times the amount of uh, budget money available. So most of it does revolve around the finances. And my guess is, is that obviously it's great to have somebody like Haley who can be an advocate that can really make that aware because it's one of those squeaky wheel gets the grease probably in a lot of situations. But, uh, you know, and some of it's out of sight, out of mind, you know, if you don't really think about it. So I think it's really neat that you're bringing it to people's attention and, and making it so real for them. Um, do we are, you know, are we proactive in, in constantly asking for more funds or what's well, years ago, we, we had a more proactive approach on the spay and neutering, educating, um, going into the schools, educating in uh, adult classes, uh, homeowners associations. But as the, the budgets got smaller and smaller, um, all of those programs went by the wayside. Um, being able to afford to do some of the things that some of the other counties are still doing um, that's that's our obstacle right now and without educating and and getting it out there a lot of people they well, just don't know about it and, and, having yeah. and actually I, I wanted to just, uh, comment on that if I could that obviously doing spay and neuter and education stuff they were the um, animal control is a, a kind of a reactive to the process when actually pet owners could be more responsible Sure. Uh, and actually be more proactive on their own uh, because uh, local animal controls, as Marjorie said, are oftentimes cut to the quick as far as funding and they work very, very hard uh, to keep up with a lot of the demands and stuff that a lot of that could be alleviated if just generally uh, the public would be more responsive to uh, pet ownership and doing spay and neuter on their own. So instead of it being a reactive thing that the local government takes care of, that getting a message out and encouraging folks would be helpful to have it done proactively ahead of before sure. it becomes an animal control issue. Well, and I, and I can see that and I can know, you know, I know we, I have two dogs and I will say that it is, it's very hard to make that necessarily the priority when you've got mm -hmm. also two kids and you have all of these other things that are happening, you know, in your life and to say, you know, the, the costs like, you know, we've talked about of spaying and neutering your, your pet you know, you're looking at, okay, well, I've got all of these things and this is not necessarily the most important at this moment. So I can see where that would be, that that would be difficult, um, you know, for, for uh, people in, in, in homes to, if they really are not understanding just how important it is. But I've also lost dogs that have run away. And I know that that was probably contributed to that too, which I would love yeah. to have, you know, have back. But yeah, well, that that is a good point. That spay and neutering is a pet control way to, uh, of controlling pet overpopulation, but also controlling your pet and not letting your pet run wild, and you know, keeping them in the house or in a contained area that's, of course, um, habitable for the animal, but uh, not allowing them to run wild uh, would be very, very beneficial. Well, and, and the, what you mentioned about the cancers that certain pets have got, you know, that, or they're more likely to get cancer and things like that, which I do know that that's true. I've heard about that. Uh, so that, those kind of messages, I think, are, are really important because there's something that I necessarily didn't think about prior to looking at this and talking about this. I wasn't thinking about that being one of the, the benefits because I know people really love their pets and they would do anything for them. And once they get those kind of diseases and they're not as healthy, it's a lot harder to bring them back to health than, you know, than preventative measures, as we all know, really with anybody, even us. Right, and that's what the thing about awareness is that, you know, it's just like you just said, you know, you didn't know about it before now. Well, that's the same with a lot of people. They don't, they don't know, and that's where we have to take a proactive approach and make people aware. It's no different than the city of Leesburg doing the adopt a pet on your website, and that, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, it caused awareness. People well, and, and that and that goes right into my what what kind of what kind of um, support have you received? And uh, Anna, you were just saying that uh, the city of Leesburg. What did they What did they do? Yes, for the cities uh, like the city of Leesburg, we you added the uh, button on the website, yeah. which linked to the animal services website, which is for the adoptions of the pets. So that has yeah. definitely. And, and what we actually did in the city of Leesburg, uh, Lake County. 
handles animal control and we have a great relationship with the county and they do just a, a really wonderful job uh, and the city was kind of inspired a little bit by um, he Haley's message um, that uh, each year uh, an estimated six to eight million homeless animals in our shelters every year uh, and about half of those are adopted so it's nationally it's it's a big issue uh, so back in September, the city of Leesburg passed a resolution uh, s supporting efforts to try to reduce pet overpopulation and taking measures to decrease uh, um, pet populations in ways. Um, and we, again, passed this resolution in support of Haley's efforts. Um, and again, like I said, it is such a, a large issue when you look at the national numbers that it is something that we do believe needs more attention. So now, the, how do you think that the resolution is going to help? Uh, well, the resolution basically just says the city of Leesburg is recognizing this, and we hope to bring attention to this. And from that, I changed the city's website so that we can bring some attention in and, and have another link in there and kind of spread the message in a way. Um, like I said, Lake County does a tremendous job, uh, but they, they can definitely use some support and some help. And so in this way, this is us trying to further uh, spread the voice message that Haley had started. So tell me, what role do the animal shelters play in, in the efforts, that, in Haley's efforts? Well, first of all, we wanted to thank Haley um, for all of her efforts. Uh, she's, she's a beautiful spokesperson for you. Not <laughs> only is she beautiful. And smart. Smart, <laughs> young. Uh, she knows a lot more about uh, local governments and animal services because she's really gotten involved in what not only our county and her community has done, but other, other counties. And a lot of adults can't say that. She has stepped up to the plate. She's committed herself to try to help somehow. And sometimes it only takes one person to, to move mountains. And she's moving them, but we need to everybody support her in her movement. Um, it can just start with one person, uh, then end up in your community, uh, hopefully the county. So it takes private adoptions, uh, volunteers, all of our rescue organizations. We work with about 200 rescue organizations in county, out of county, out of state. But uh, probably the most important thing is for people to stand up and uh, have a voice, just like Haley has done. Uh, the animals can't speak for themselves. Uh, we're here to hopefully take care of them the best way that we can, and Haley's done a wonderful job <laughs> speaking up for, for the ones that are here. Well, and I know that you know we're not here to pat necessarily just pat Haley on the back, but I have to say that it's impressive because I, you know, I, I watch TV all the time, and you see something that comes on TV or something that happens, and it pulls on your heartstrings, and you're like, oh, you know, those poor kids or the animals, or the, and then I go on to my next show, and that's <laughs> that's about the it, that's about it, and so to have something that mu that really does affect you, and then you take action to it is a pretty impressive thing to do, especially at such a young age. So Absolutely. I know that our um, county and it, I, is the better because of it. Um, and I don't know if, if both, if either one of you might know, or Robert, I'm not sure if this is a question you might know, but what if somebody can't afford? Like, you know, they have an animal, they're willing to adopt the animal, they can pay, for, you know, for the food or whatever, but they, they just can't afford, or they, you know, they already have an animal, I guess, because if you adopt them, they're already spayed and neutered, right? Correct. Basically, yeah. the, the animal is free. Right. Mo what you are paying for are the services to have a veterinarian uh, give the rabies shot, um, the other vaccinations, testing, spay and neutering, uh, microchip, uh, your license. Those are the things that the adoption fee is actually covering. So now, um, my question though would be, if you have an animal already and you can't afford to spay and neuter, neuter them, is there any options there? There are a few options. Um, a lot of times the animals that are coming into the shelter are already spayed or neutered. So those animals, um, the price of adoption is a lot, a lot lower. Uh, we have the Stax Foundation. Um, they we do have some things. Yeah, Stax Foundation. What is um, the Stax Foundation? I'll let Haley. Uh, uh, Haley, tell us about that. Tell you about the Stax Foundation. Um, the Stax Foundation is basically. Uh, I don't, they give out certificates, and what it is is you 
go on the staxfoundation.org and they are a Lake County based uh, organization and they give out certificates if you want to get your animal fixed and you go f online and you fill out their form and they send a certificate to the um, clinic and it's basically a coupon uh, which is so much off the surgery but if you send it to certain clinics, certain clinics will honor the coupon fully, so it's actually a free spay or neuter. Oh, wow. So that is definitely a big option for Lake County, you know, to do it that way. And what is In that? Other counties, is, there, is there a website address for that, or where do they it's go? It's stacksfoundation.org. Stacks. And in other counties, they actually, um, like Orange County, and that they, when you speak with the county and that, they'll do low cost or free spay and neuter based on your income. So there again, you have in other counties, not in our county, but in other counties, <laughs> um, ways of getting it fixed that way too. So tell, tell us a little bit about multiple pet adoptions. Is there a, anything? Other counties do offer multiple <laughs> pet adoptions. Lake County does not. So you cannot it, adopt more than one? You can adopt more than one, but you're basically, it's not cheaper the more that you adopt. Oh, okay. I see um, what you're saying. Basically each uh, fee is for whatever that animal needs. If the animal needs everything, then you would be paying for all of the service that animal needs. So the price is per animal. If the animal doesn't need to be spayed or neutered, obviously it's a lot cheaper because you're just paying for vaccinations. And what, uh, what are we doing to promote adoptions right now? We have our own county's website. We have Haley, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> um, a lot of our organizations that work with us some of them are private private people that have you know started their own little rescue um, like Haley <laughs> she started out private now she's uh, her own uh, rescue group a lot of the rescue groups do a lot of word-of-mouth advertising for us um, newspapers magazine articles lakefront TV um, but those are about all the different areas that there's any type of advertising. Uh, you know, it's, it, I used to kind of have a thing, you know, a long time ago, I used to think, well, you know, I don't know about adopting a pet, because obviously if they're there, there's a reason that they're there. You know, you, know, you have <laughs> these things in your mind. But I will say that recently, you know, one, I have an adopt, we have an adopted um, little dog, and he's just as good as he can be and wonderful. Uh, we also, Though, you know, I have a friend that has a therapy dog that he adopted from the shelter, and he's such a good, I mean, he's like the best little dog ever. And you know, so, I mean, really, you need to put that out of your mind, that kind of thing, because exactly. they can be some of the best, most oh, yeah. loving. A lot of people pets. have that, that mindset that if they're at the shelter, they're bad. Well, yeah. That's not true. A lot of them are potty trained, and they, yeah. they know commands. I mean, that's the problem is a lot of people get these puppies, and they get them out of the puppy stage, they get them up to a year old they realize that they're actually a dog and then they don't want them anymore. And that's where I think a lot of the problem comes in, but then they don't get them fixed and then they, you know, they have puppies and things like that. And that's when you get those dropped off at the shelter because they're like, well, this thing had this. And so it is definitely, but a lot of the dogs aren't bad. A lot of them, we get a lot of dogs that they, they're potty trained, you know. They, well, and I know some dogs, I mean, sometimes you have, you have people that have to move and wherever they're moving to, they don't allow pets anymore. And so that, I know those kind of things happen. So you have good pets and, and they don't know what to do with them. And they, you know, I know that that kind of thing happens. And, and like you said, people, you know, dogs run away. So we, we try to advise people with their pets to use us as a last resort to bring their animal right. to. But most of the time they're using us as their first resort instead of trying, trying to, to find, a, friend or find a home for that animal. They're using us as a first resort instead of trying to take the time to find a home. Well, Margaret, let me ask you, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing that Lake County has gone through a tremendous change over the past two decades where we've gotten more and more populated. So obviously animal control issues grow with that. But with the, when the economy kind of went down a bit, did you see that change as far oh, as absolutely. the number of animals you were picking up because of the, maybe related to the economy that people were just giving up animals? Yes. and. A lot of uh, homes had to decide, okay, we've lost our homes, we're, we're losing our jobs, we have children. Um, the last thing on their list might be the animals, but they're the first thing that might have to leave. Um, 
obviously they have to take care of the children, but they can give away the animal because we've, as a society, uh, kind of turned it into a, a disposable, right. put away. Well, and of course, you know, now, you know, we've talked about this, your demand has gone up and because of the economy, your resources have gone down. Yeah. And so here we are in, in this situation that we're in. Um, and, you know, we're kind of running low on time, but before we go, I want to talk a little bit more to Haley about some of your future plans with this cause. Um, well, I continue to, I hope to continue to keep, you know, i going at it, I mean, we go all the time to, you know, local places and advertise. We go to, you know, Tractor Supply and we sit outside the stores and with our pets and adopt them out. And, you know, we try to, we try to raise awareness about the shelter. If we don't, as a rescue, have something that you're looking for, we refer them to the shelter. And that's the biggest thing is, you know, is we have to advertise. We have to do something because you know, nobody knows the shelter's sitting there off of 561 in Astatula, <laughs> and there's no signage. That's one of the biggest things. I mean, there's no sign for, you know, animal services. Well, people think animal services is, you know, where you put the raccoons and the bad dogs and the things that want to bite you, and it's, it's not the case. And so that's, that's the biggest thing is we, we have to keep trying to find a way to advertise and show people there's free means of advertisement. So, I mean, we just have to find them and grab a hold of them and tell people. I Let, mean, yeah. you tell one person, they'll tell someone else, hopefully. And to make awareness that, you know, the shelter isn't a dump all. That's the biggest thing. I mean, in all reality, you made a commitment to that pet. Just like you make a commitment to your kids. You don't just, oh, they did one thing wrong today. You know, they jumped on the sofa after we got a new one. They were allowed on the old one, but not the new one. So we're just going to get rid of the animal it's not it's not the case it's like a kid I mean you don't just get rid of the kid well and I have to ask you um, how old are you 17 and so are you a, a senior this year or uh, no I'm a junior but I've never been to high school okay I do dual enrollment at Lake Sumter so what is your plans after you get out of high school I hope to continue schooling to go to be a veterinarian so Yay. we need to keep our eye on you <laughs> <That's what> we <laughs> Well, Haley, thank you so much, and thank you, Marjorie and Robert. Thank and before, you. Thank you. really, before we wrap this up, I want to make sure that if there's any resources, I mean, I know you have a shelter. If somebody's seeing this and they want to adopt a pet now because, um, what, or, or don't, I'm guessing you probably take money, too, for donations yes. for things and um, to make this more aware. You can go to the county's website, www.lakecountyfl.gov. Go to the Adopt a Pet uh, page. Uh, you can see some of the animals' photographs. We do little glamour shots. Um, not, not all of, not all of the <laughs> animals um, have their pictures taken. Uh, if there is anybody out there that would like to come and volunteer and help take pictures to try to get more of the animals' uh, pictures on that website, please contact me. Um, we'd love to have some volunteers help with that. Great. Any other, any other resources out there that we want to make sure we mention? If you go to our links page on that on the county's website, um, you can link uh, other organizations: South Lake Animal League, Cat Protection Society, Humane Societies, Hound Haven. Uh, there's some other Stacks Foundation. There's some other information there as well. If you if you need some. Well, and, and I know you're probably too young to, to know about this, but I'm sure Bob Barker is very proud of you, Haley. Absolutely. <laughs> the price is right. He always finishes his show by saying, please spay and neuter your pets. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.